What was that thing that you remembered in that moment of clarity yesterday, last week, last month, before you came here on this earth? You can't remember it, right? This experience, what's happening now, this challenge, this relationship, seems to be an exception to this insight, to this teaching, to this beautiful, broadening, healing, all-encompassing insight into what's essentially and always true. It felt so real, but I can't quite seem to remember it Or maybe I remember the idea of it. I can't quite seem to make it real and apply it and believe it and trust it here. Well, of course, if we were able to do that, we wouldn't be growing. If evolution was just a matter of getting one thing and getting it for all eternity, This wouldn't be an evolutionary process. We haven't integrated a new level of spiritual vision, of insight. We haven't healed where we have not yet healed. And so it's always 100% of the time true that we will all, all of us, find ourselves in experiences of incredible stress. People ask, do you have to suffer on this evolutionary journey? kind of yes, kind of no. Like, yes. Um, it's, it's implicit that we all have our own attachments and unconscious dynamics within. And so as life experience unfolds, we're going to face that and that's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable. And no, like, we don't necessarily have to add more resistance to it. We can cultivate agency over our thoughts, our reactions, as discomfort arises, and then that really alleviates the suffering. It even brings up the question, is there even any suffering if we've really learned how to tend to the moment, how to tend to our vibration, our thoughts in the moment? But this is inevitable, one way or another. Challenges happen, confrontations happen. And in the presence of those confrontations, it'll always seem, if even just for a moment, that the person, place, thing, experience, environment is in fact taking something from us. That there is in fact a a reality of unfairness, of victimization, of abuse, of loss, or deprivation of something that we would otherwise need. A very essential Plutonian dynamic is that of where we feel blocked or limited by power greater than our own self. So I'm inherently powerless in the face of this person, place, thing, experience. And when we believe ourselves to be powerless, that's not a good experience. Like there's no joy in it. When we believe ourselves to be powerless, our perception and our solutions are all going to be incredibly limited, usually through some sense of defeat, resentment, or the need to use more power and force in order to gain our sense of power back. And I'm not interested in all this specific, but what if this? What if that? Because we all have those what ifs. I'm not interested in it. I'm not even going to tell anyone what they're supposed to do. Yes, there are real experiences and examples of people being very violent and abusive. And it's never for me to tell someone else what they should do about their experiences. We have people throughout history and we have people such as you and me in our own life journey where we've all made this choice at various points to do something that's incredibly personal and incredibly intimate and only we can account for it. Other people can't. Only ourselves can. And this is what? Being more present, being more forgiving, being more kind, tending to our thoughts and our perceptions beyond, just beyond where we have otherwise tended to fall into attack or victimization or blame or shame. And it's those very moments where we all question to the extent that we feel we can, that we feel safe to do so. We all question the perceptions of the negativity that we perceive out there. And this is so important. We can only figure this out for ourselves. So we have the example of Jesus, right? His whole thing was forgive them. Ultimately, in my interpretation of it, his teaching was there's no death. You can't kill the Son of God, which is what we all are. You can't take anything away 
from eternity. You can't take anything away from total powerfulness. There is no limitation. That's like an ultimate deeper realization. Perhaps we're all exploring that edge where in the face of deep confrontation and challenge, Libra Aries, if it's interpersonal or just in life experiences where we might be tempted to fall into our own negativity and defense and to be perceiving a very unfriendly, harsh world out there, where in our own integrity, in our own honesty, do we each choose to explore this, this edge of tending a mindset of compassion, of patience, of tolerance, of faith. And again, this is not about telling anyone that you should be able to do more of that because I don't do more of that. I only do it to the extent that I do. I'm present with my own very intimate, personal, and hard soul journey. And I can see the arc of growth. And I could also see where, oh yeah, I really have these strong perceptions of victimization, of attack. If anyone were to tell me something that I didn't feel emotionally capable of apprehending, I might actually get pretty angry at them, right? And this is something I'm deeply sensitive to. We must not alienate ourselves. One person who has reached out to me about this topic has spoken about it in terms of masochism. And this is spiritual bypassing when we can try to be forgiving, be loving, be kind. But it's, if it's not authentic, it's not authentic and it doesn't mean anything, right? Forgiveness is truly a matter of tending our thoughts and realizing that we can only hurt our own self. We can only hurt our own selves by believing thoughts that hurt us. Right? That's it. That's the ultimate teaching. It's one that I have faith in. That's like the a root of my spiritual practice. It's a lot of what I'm translating and sharing here along this journey of learning with you. Is it fully realized? No. And we can't alienate ourselves and try to pretend to be something that we're not. But I also want to invite within all of us just a little bit of space, just a little bit, because that's all we can do. All we can ever offer is just a little bit of space to meet those very places that are tense, that are hard, that are victimized, that are defensive, that are full of blame and shame and hurt and punishment. To meet those with just a little bit more of a... Hmm, a little more spaciousness. Willingness to feel what we're feeling, but not necessarily believe it as much, not necessarily act on it as much. So we take a little space from it. And in space, there's always, I don't care what the situation is, there's always perspective. There's always perspective. And I find for myself, when I get back into a flow of dancing, playing music, just doing the various things or spending time alone in, in nature, getting in the water, these are all things that naturally reconnect me with an essential source of power. And in that reconnection, it's almost like all the other things get a lot smaller. And I realize, oh, only from a limited place of self-knowledge would I feel defensive about this. Only from my belief in my own smallness, actually, would I take issue with this. And that's it. I mean, that's really the truth of it for all of us, but we have to find that out for ourselves. This is such an important thing. A couple of principles that I would offer here. It's never for us to tell another person unless they're asking consent or wanting our opinion or guidance, right? To say, well, this is all in your mind. Because you try applying that to yourself in those hardest moments where you're actually failing at that. We have to be compassionate and accepting and um, supportive. Not supportive, it's... Um, just yielding ourselves with respect, respecting of where we're all at in our own spiritual practice. We can apply this ourselves. So that's one principle. We never, and this is where I really speak to all of us and all spiritual teachers and anyone doing this kind of work, doing sessions, teaching, making videos. So just be so mindful of any way in which a spiritual principle or spiritual idea can become a source of alienation that actually disconnects us from a from a preliminary place, which is the second principle, we have to be where we are first. And if we're not feeling what we're feeling, if we're not accessing what's arising first, we can't get to the next level, which is forgiveness. Like first we identify the darkness, we identify the thoughts, the victimization, the negativity. And there has to be a moment, just a moment, 
of abiding in witness, in presence. That's first. Then what immediately happens in that, if we open ourselves to it, is just even a little willingness to say, I know not what this is about. There's deeper healing that actually points me to deeper power and self-knowledge that I have yet to attain, I have yet to realize. I'm willing to correct my thinking. And I'm going to create the space for correction by not engaging and and facilitating more negativity. But we can't really do that unless we're actually able to get to that first place of just creating some space between the immediacy of what's arising and our thoughts about it. Just to feel first, just to be able, and sometimes that takes, sometimes that takes time. Sometimes even having the awareness of what's going on, if we're oppressing, if we're bypassing our feelings, it might be necessary to even just access the fact of anger. Right? If there's a field of depression, you often, one often cannot jump from depression to liberation. Because that depression is actually, uh, it's a very low and very unhealthy vibratory state, one that I'm very familiar with. And what I've often found is beyond the depression is a little bit of a suppressed will, right? Suppressed desire, suppressed needs, suppressed feelings. And often that needs to be accessed first. The thing is, and this is what we're all learning in our own ways, all of this is held. This entire evolutionary journey, the entirety of our process in learning who we are, learning to respond and see all experience from a place of greater agency and power. All of this is held. And time presents itself for us for our learning. And experiences repeat themselves within time for our learning. And it's all a part of this beautiful thread of mystery, but it's not really a mystery, but it seems like that, of life presenting an ongoing opportunity in cycles to point us back to ourselves and to our power. And so the power we have not yet known, the empowerment and the self-knowledge that we have not yet attained or abided in is the very place that we are dying into. And just being able to hold that perspective in the midst of challenges says, I'm upset, I'm angry, I'm whatever the word is, fundamentally because I don't know who I am. And if we want to know who we are, if we want to be certain about who we are, if we want to be convinced about the rightness of our identity, then we should be right about every situation that happens. We should be absolutely right in our reactions and our responses. If we're willing to learn and grow to where we have never yet been, to a greater threshold of awakeness, let us not be right. Let us be willing for everything we thought was true, for all the structures of certainty that we've created that are actually just keeping us hidden and protected in our belief in smallness. Let us be willing for all of that to be shattered and broken, knowing there's something so good on the other end of this. I'm going to close this video with this one thought. We see in any organism, be it in nature or in the body, and it's true um, spiritually and socially as well, there's a field between letting go and letting things be and how that facilitates on its own a natural correction. Like one of the most helpful healing practices is not eating, right? For forever, all cultures all over the world have known, and this is kind of coming back in modern days as as something that's very well known in the forms of like intermittent fasting and things like that, that if you're sick, if you're unwell, stop eating, stop doing, (laughs) just stop putting things in there. And it'll allow the time for the body to kind of work itself out and heal. Animals do that all the time. When they're sick, they don't eat. It's so, it's so inherent. It's universal. We allow a natural process to unfold and things work themselves out. We just allow ourselves to breathe and be with something and it, it like be with the discomfort, right? And it just, it unfolds, it unravels itself. And allowing everything to be as it is is different than sitting in suppression or depression or complacency because that's actually holding ourselves back. The quality of allowing everything to be as it is really just means it's enough for us to tend our thoughts. 
right? To, to not add negativity to life. Because if you don't add negativity to life, truth will emerge. Like all you have to do is not interfere with a naturally unfolding self-evident process of correction. In A Course in Miracles, the word atonement or the atonement idea principle is another way of describing correction. And we're not responsible for correction. It's a funny thing. If you think about it, we can't correct ourselves. We can't actively do the change. We can't change conditions. We are always and only in the position of allowing and creating the space or allowing the space is a more accurate term. Not interfering with the space might even be more accurate for correction to happen on its own. Quick reminder that the chart interpretation course begins late August. This is only for those who are already familiar with the basics of evolutionary astrology. You've studied with me. You've studied this work on your own. If you haven't already worked with me, an application is necessary. If you want to study from the ground up and study for me, you can take the Essentials course. It's a self-study program that allows you to catch up to the chart interpretation course. And we'll be beginning the Essentials course again next year for another live round. So you can check all of that in the description below. Thank you for watching.